Today you are going to be installing Ubabuga on Mac and yes this is hands down the funniest software name I've ever heard ever I mean Ubabuga but you want to know another very funny software name that we never even think about anymore because it's so successful Google I mean Google like that's Google Google like it's 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 like giggity you know but hey they, they do numbers so we don't think about it walkie talkie is another funny one but regardless of anything you're about to download and install it, but there's a few things that you need to know. First off, it's your man, Chugubu Ikem, your AI coach, ready to get you up and running with AI. This time, it's a text generation web UI, so that you don't have to go to ChatGPT every time you want some answers or just want someone to talk to. You can have it right there locally on your MacBook, ready to go. First thing you need to know is that this tutorial is meant for Apple Silicon MacBooks, meaning M1, M2, M3, and likely M4, 5, 6, whenever they come out. If you have an Intel MacBook, which are the MacBooks that came out before the M1s, you can still follow along with this tutorial. Most of what I'm saying is applicable to your laptop and if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below or even reach out to me in my Discord. The link is in the description for any questions both Silicon and Intel related and I'll make sure to get to them as often and as fast as possible. And if you don't know which type of MacBook you have, you can always check by clicking the Apple in the top left corner, then click About This Mac and right there you'll see if you have an Intel or an Apple Silicon MacBook. You also need Mac OS Ventura 13.3 or newer which can also be found in that same about this Mac section if you don't have that please update your Mac otherwise this is not gonna work and everything in this tutorial is in a Google Doc for you to download and follow along it will also be in my discord for you to check out and interact with as well it's also worth mentioning that there are some one-click install methods which is literally where you pretty much click once or two or three times or whatever and then you get Ubabuga. but uh, I've tried them even one very popular given by Pinocchio, which is another one-click installer app for a lot of these things um, I have not had a good experience with them I actually was not able to get Ubabuga or a lot of other things running at all with them That's no shade to the one-click installers or Pinocchio I just haven't had a good experience with them So this video is to teach you the full way to be able to manually download it onto your computer But a one-click installer would be something very handy to have so if there's something I just don't know or I'm doing wrong please let me know in the comments below or reach out because figuring this out would be very helpful all right now we can start we're going to be using homebrew and the terminal now to get to the terminal all you got to do is press command and spacebar then a spotlight search is going to come up all you got to do is type in terminal and boom you'll get into the terminal okay great now you understand how to get to the terminal I need you to go over to brew.sh that's the website where you're going to get homebrew all you have to do is copy that command line code then you're going to get right back into your terminal and you're just going to paste the code in there. Once you press enter, they're going to ask you to put in your computer password, plug that in, Brew is going to tell you what it's going to install. You're just going to click enter and then boom, Brew will be installed in about less than a minute or so. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. You now have Homebrew, but you actually can't use Homebrew, at least on Mac silicone laptops. On Intel, it was different. With Intel, once you installed Homebrew, it got installed right into your path. So right out the box, you could start using Homebrew in your command line. Unfortunately, with Silicon, you can't do that. You need to add it to your path. And for those wondering what your path is, your path is where all the commands for your terminal lie. Now we can get more in depth about paths and everything like that. And if you guys want to know more, I'll definitely teach you more. Or again, you could reach out on Discord and I'll let you know there. But we're not going to get too deep into the path. Just understand that you need brew in the path directory in order for this to work. So you're going to copy this code, okay? Run it and then you will have brew able to be used in your terminal. And from there, all you're going to do is type in brew doctor to make sure that you have brew and then it should say this quirky line of your machine is ready to brew or something like that and then we're good to go so now that you have brew you're just going to type in brew install git and then brew install python and then you're good to go but now you have the ability to go get ubabuga but first there are some terminal commands that you need to know but if you already understand the terminal then feel free to skip ahead you advanced user you as for the rest of you i need you to open a new terminal window once you open it you should automatically be in your root directory by default and it will look like this just replace my names with whatever your usernames are for your laptop see we need to get ubabuga onto our desktop now ubabuga doesn't need to be on our desktop it could be in pretty much any folder that we want but for the sake of this tutorial and keeping us all on the same page I'm just gonna make it our desktop but how do you get to the desktop through the terminal there are a few commands that you need to know first type in PWD PWD stands for print working directory once you type in PWD and click enter it will show you where you are in your Mac file tree then type in LS LS is short for list 
This will list all the files in the directory that you're currently in. By the way, directory is just another name for folder. It's just that when you're in the terminal, we call it directories, that's all. So once you typed in ls, you guys should be seeing all the normal folders that you would usually see, downloads, desktop, and more. In fact, if you open up a new finder window and type in command shift H, you can literally follow along with where we're going in the Mac UI. So as you can see a representation of what we're doing, but it's the same exact thing. Now in order to get into that desktop folder, all you have to do is CD into desktop. So you're going to type CD desktop into the terminal and boom, now you're in the terminal. And you can see these changes because it will say in the command line, your username, then the folder that you're in. And also at the top of the terminal window, it'll show you where you are. But again, if you're ever confused, just type in PWD and boom, you know. Now that we're here, I need you to go to the Ubabuga repository and get the Git link. Now that you have the link, come back to your terminal where you're still in the desktop directory and type git clone and then paste the link into your terminal and that will tell your Mac to go fetch the repository from git and put it on your desktop. By default, it will be called Text Generation Web UI, but you can always rename it later. Now I need you to CD into Text Generation Web UI and then run Python 3-M VNV VNV. Then press enter on that command. If you don't see anything, then that means it worked. This command creates a clean virtual environment for us to run Ubabuga on. Then run source VNV slash bin slash activate to activate the virtual environment. Once done, you should see VNV in front of your username like mine right now. And also know that you need to activate the VNV every time you restart Ubabuga. Now, while you're still in the text generation web UI directory, I need you to type in pip install dash r requirements dot txt. That will install all the dependencies that Ubabuga needs in order to run effectively. And if you're curious to see where requirements dot text is, it's right there in the folder. Just double click into it, scroll down and boom, you'll see it right there. The installation takes a minute or two, but it'll be done soon. And then while you're still in the text generation web UI directory, next you need to download PyTorch, more specifically nightly PyTorch. PyTorch is what large language models are built on. That's what ChatGPT is built on, that's what Claude is built on and so forth. So we need it for Ubabuga. So then you're gonna go to the PyTorch website, you're gonna click on nightly. From there, you're gonna copy the code. You're gonna paste that into the terminal and then boom, you're gonna have PyTorch nightly as well. Now you're going to type in Python server.py and you should have Ubabuga up and running. But of course, you're gonna get that HTTP link. You can highlight that link, right click it and then click open link and then it will open in your default browser or you can right click it, copy it, and then put it into whatever browser you want and boom, you'll be right there on Ubabuga. Now, if you try to write any prompts or start a convo, it's not gonna work because we're going to need a model. Ubabuga doesn't come with any models, so we gotta go get one. Now, a nice cute model you can download is Facebook's 1.3b model. It's not a very good model, but it's a small compact one. And for those who want that quick satisfaction of knowing that you did it, it'll work. All you gotta do is copy it here from Hugging Face and then paste it into the model section of Ubabuga. And make sure you have auto load turned on so that that when you do choose your model, it automatically loads the model for you to use instead of you having to manually do that. You're gonna have to wait for it to load. It'll be a quick load because this is a very small file. And if you open the terminal, you'll be able to see the loading of the models and how long it took for each model to load. Now, once your model is fully downloaded, you can click the drop down. And right now, you don't see the model that we downloaded. But if you click the refresh button right next to the drop down, then the next time you click that drop down menu, you will see the model you just downloaded. And again, in the terminal, you can literally see how long it took for you to download this model. And as you can see right here in the bottom right, you can see that it's recommending you to use the chat instruct slash instruct modes to properly use this model. See, different models have different purposes. There are ones that are made better for chat, and there are ones that are made better for instruction and this one is clearly an instruction type of model so we're going to choose chat instruct and then boom bow now you can ask it anything although of course the answers aren't going to be very good but at least it's running now of course you guys are going to want better models so one model that i do recommend is the capybara hermes 2.5 mistral 7b gguf model by this great guy the bloke he makes really great models so you can pretty much just come to him for all the models that you need now 7b is the size of this model these models come in different sizes like 13b 34b even 70b and the larger the size the better it will run but the better your computer needs to be 
for it to run and 7b is typically the largest macbooks can normally do maybe 13b but then that's just pushing it to be honest you also want ggf files ggf files work the best on mac there's also gptq and awq models but you really want ggf generally speaking but even after all this many of you are still going to have some issues and some errors like this one now some of you may have started to try to download different models and might be finding that you're getting this type of error if you are getting this type of error this is the way to fix that what's going on is that we need to change the type of python that ubabuga is running on and shouts out to tortoise ham he shared the solution to this issue on reddit and here's how you do it so we need to get into our text generation web ui folder and then we're going to get into the vnv and then we're going to get into the bin and we actually need to reinstall um these pythons right here these these pythons so what you're going to do you're going to open a terminal you're going to type in cd and then you're going to drag this folder and that's a quick way to get into whatever terminal you want to be in you want to click enter and then boom now you're in that terminal that directory you're going to type in this command okay now you're going to run users slash your username desktop text generation web ui vnv bin python 3.9 now for some reason mine said 3.9 and i also have 3.12 in here for some reason but um if you have 3.10 or whatever you would put that in um and then you put dash m pip uninstall llama and so we're going to do that now i got prompted yes or no because of the multiple python situation that i was experiencing but what you guys would get is this and if you guys have that that means it worked and we can move on to the next step but for me i'll be clicking yes in order to move forward so i just uninstalled python 3.9 and then you're going to put in this one now this is going to put python back in but in the way that we need it to be see pip install llama right so then we're going to run this command and make sure you reinstall whatever python you uninstalled so for me i uninstalled 3.9 so i'm reinstalling 3.9 if you uninstall 3.10 3.12 3. whatever then make sure you're reinstalling that same python now we press enter it's going to take a little bit of time okay great so it just gave us a little bit of a warning but no biggie so then we're just going to cd dot dot to go back in a, a couple directories now we're back in the text generation web ui right here we're going to type in the source vnv slash activate to activate that virtual environment once it's activated then we type in python server dot py and then once it's on as you know we just kind of open that link and then boom and now you can go back to whatever model you were trying to use. I have a few here. We can go to, you know, let's say uh, Mistral 7B, right? Remember to have that auto load on, but now that it's loaded, or we could reload it. Awesome, now that it's reloaded, we just have to head over to like instruct give me a boy name boom john and done congratulations to everyone who got ubabuga set up and if you appreciate what was done in this video please remember to like the video and consider subscribing for more ai videos like this now keep in mind experimentation is going to be your best friend even in the ubabuga settings definitely go through those and see what works for you as there are many settings to go through so many in fact that it's probably worth another video and if you guys would like that video let me know in the comments below and as always if you need extra help you can always reach out to me on my discord and i'll be happy to help you now probably the coolest feature in all this is that you actually have someone that you could talk to all you have to do is make sure that you're in this chat mode right here and in this chat section here then you're going to scroll down you see where it says character gallery you can drop that down and then boom you'll get this example character and as you can see i've already had a conversation with this ai and i gotta say it's actually pretty fun and enjoyable more fun than i expected it to be i cannot lie in fact if you read through the conversation you could tell that it got pretty funny and also pretty weird very quickly but definitely some cool stuff here and i urge you guys to try it out you can also create your own characters but that's a whole nother video have a great day guys